Hi, and thanks for joining us again for another episode of Sealed for Good. I'm Phil Scardino, the MD of Gripset Industries. And I want to talk a little bit today about tiling over membranes. And um, there's a lot that we could discuss on this, so we probably have a few episodes on this topic itself. But one thing I want to discuss, which I see frequently in, in wet areas particularly, is how joints of tiles are actually corked or not corked on top of membranes and the importance of that. So from experience I've seen situations where, uh, where showers are waterproof on the walls uh, as they should be and the shower alcove the floor is done. A lot of tilers, uh, and I don't want to generalise, but there are tilers out there that actually think that they may not need to cork the internal joint because the walls are waterproof behind. And the waterproofing behind is totally independent for whatever the reason, the standard, which I'll explain in a moment, calls for sealing or caulking the joints between tiles. And then it also goes for wall floor junctions. I see it less with wall floor junctions, but particularly with wall to wall junctions. Now, a membrane serves its purpose to stop water getting into the substrate, the wall surface, the floor surface. We all know that. The joint, the sealing joint in tiles, it's got nothing to do, even though silicon sealants are waterproof, they're not about actually uh, waterproofing the alcove. They are about assisting with the movement of tiles because tiles actually, some of them will absorb water, some will um, change shape slightly, not to the naked eye, but what we, there's a phenomenon called tile growth. And if you don't have uh, movement joints in the tile bed, what will happen is you'll end up getting a situation where tiles will start to, you'll get grout joints that tend to crack and you can, in the worst case scenario you can even see tile growth where tiles start to bow off the wall. And I've seen situations that bad that in shower alcoves where tiles are hard up against each other in the, um, I'll use these two tiles as an example, hard up against each other in the internal wall and they also butt up to a timber door frame. There's been, with no movement joints, I've seen situations where tiles grow to the extent that you can't open and close the door of that architrave. And that's the tiles that are actually moving. So movement joints and even a shower that's 900 by 900 are very critical. Tile comes up hard against a piece of timber or a door frame. It needs to be corked and sealed. You need to leave that gap and seal through it. And same for that internal corner in the shower alcove. Critical. And when you cork, that corking needs to be right through the tile joint, the depth of the tile joint, not face filled. It can't have, be full of grout or tile adhesive and just have a bit of silicon in the face because that won't allow the movement. These things, believe it or not, will expand and contract. And ceramics and stones are a living and breathing thing at times. And so you need to have that, that little bit of a movement joint there just allows that compression between the tiles when they're absorbing water or heat in the shower alcove to move. And that is also critical at the wall floor junction. Okay, it, obviously uh, this is the way that shower alcoves are tiled. The floor tile sits under the, the wall tile and that corking is critical there. The waterproof membrane on the membrane, it sits up against me like so, but the tile needs to be sealed correctly right through because you will have movement. And particularly for upper floor um, constructions where you've got framing, you can have tiled floors that, or shower floors or bathroom floors that can drop. The sealant is there to help the tile. Got nothing to do with the waterproofing. The waterproofing needs to be able to substantiate the movement and have its own integrity for the system, independent of the tiles. But the tiles need to work in with the, with the um, membrane, and that's a critical point. And so I harp on about this all the times when I get involved with discussions and talks and. Um, consultants and I've had a few professionals in the industry ask me my opinion about this. The biggest area that we need to get improvement on in, the, in our industry is that the trades need to work together and the waterproofer is often the meat and the sandwich. You know, you get carpenters or framers or jib rockers come in, they can prepare the area or renders come in. The waterproofer comes in and waterproofs and then there's an after trade. And in, in between that there's been plumbers before them, after them, etc. Everyone needs to know how they work together. The waterproof needs to know the pre-trades and the post-trades. And so the other thing that waterproofers need to understand, and I'm sure you get reminded, but I'm going to remind you as well, wall floor junctions are the critical piece, and you need to take the tiler's perspective. A lot of you guys 
don't even know what sort of tile is being laid afterwards, you just go and waterproof the bathroom. If it's a small format tile, the tiler doesn't have a large bed of adhesive to be able to build up his tile. It might be a smaller 6mm nostril he's using. So don't make sure those corners are nice and square. Okay, don't get built up there. Sloppy membrane in the corners is just going to curve it out and that creates an issue, particularly for direct stick applications if you're tiled on top of the screed. So keep in mind about the after trade. It's a really important piece. Then you know no one's going to tamper with your membrane, the job's done. Um, and this is the piece where I think uh, understanding, even though this is not in the AS3740 standard, about how tiles are, are laid over membranes, it's a good idea that if you can get online, you get the, uh, the SAI global website, download the uh, Australian standard 3958, that's the one, 3958.1. Tiling standard, it's good to have a read about what these guys are doing afterwards, okay? And um, just think of it like a big family. You keep mum happy beforehand, you keep your little brother happy afterwards, and it's all, all goes along, the system works together, and everything's sweet from there. If you have got any other questions or queries or comments about this, please throw them in. You can email us, you can send them on Facebook, or uh, even call me if you want to have a chat. Um, but yeah, it is a really important piece of the waterproofing space that we pay attention to and get right because it's often overlooked but it often ends up being one of the issues that we end up with later where we have failures in, in wet areas with uh, leaks. Thanks for joining us once again and we'll see you next episode.